Hello friends, hope all is well and this video is first of its series where I want to share a magical stories about every nation in the planet and of course being an Indian I want to start with India and share one of the most inspirational stories that the rest of the world can learn from India and without any further ado let's jump in. This picture best illustrates one of India's most inspirational story from bicycle to a billion dreams. Back in 1960s, under the vision of great physicist Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, who strongly believed India will be second to none in the application of advanced technologies to the real world problems of mankind. It was not an easy task for Dr. Vikram Sarabhai to convince the government of his time on the relevance of space research activities for a developing nation like India, but however he had his own way convinced the government and the ISRO was born. India wanted to launch its first sounding rocket to probe the Earth's upper atmosphere where the extreme ultraviolet and the X-ray solar radiation ionizes the atoms and molecules thus creating the layer of electrons. The ionosphere is extremely important because that's the layer which reflects and modifies all the radio waves that's critical for the field of communication and navigation. In 1962, Dr. Sarabhai and Dr. Baba was looking for a site to establish a space station in equatorial region. Thumba, the fishing village in Kerala, was found most suitable as it was near the equatorial region and was ideally suited for ionospheric research. The locality, however, was inhabited by thousands of fishermen living in the villages there. It also had a beautiful church called St. Mary Magdalene Church and the bishop's house. It's natural that the acquisition of the land did not move any further. Dr. Sarabhai met the bishop, His Excellency Dr. Peter Bernard Pereira on a Saturday and requested transfer of the property. The bishop smiled and asked him to meet the next day. In the Sunday morning service, the bishop told the congregation, my children, I have a famous scientist with me who wants our church and the place I live for the work of space science and research. The science seeks truth and enriches human life. The high level of religion is spirituality. The spiritual preachers seek the help of the Almighty to bring peace to human minds. In short, what Vikram is doing and what I am doing are the same. Both science and spirituality seek the Almighty's blessing for human prosperity in mind and body. Children, can we give them the God Award for a scientific mission? There was a complete silence for a while, followed by a hearty amen from the congregation that made the entire church reverberate. But that's not the end of the struggles though. In the initial stages, Tumba had no canteen or facilities of any sort, so the scientists would cycle every day to the railway station at Trivandrum for the breakfast and dinner and they would get their lunch packed. This picture tells it all, a very humble beginning for India with extremely constrained resources and budget but with a very very big vision. The space journey for India started with satellites on bullock cart and rocket being carried in a bicycle. It was in these unassuming settings that India staged its first launch. After six months of labor on 21st November 1963, India was all set to state its first ever launch. Many eminent names in the field of science and technology gathered for the occasion and of course the bishop was there too. As the rocket was rolled onto the launcher, the things almost started going awry. The hydraulic crane developed a leak and they found a way to manually put the rocket back into a position. The remote system of the launcher started malfunctioning and they fixed that too. And once that was resolved, things seems to be in order. As the alarm sounded to clear the area around the launch pad, the countdown started and the team of scientists held their breath. At 6.25 p.m., the world was watching as the rocket streaked away into the gathering dusk. Minutes later, a sodium vapor cloud had emerged in the sky high above, tinted the orange by the setting sun. India had successfully put its first signature on space in a very unassuming circumstances. 
50 years later, in 2008, ISRO pulled off its biggest achievement yet, getting a satellite into orbit around the moon during the Chandrayaan-1 mission. That eventually led to a path-breaking discovery of water on the moon, what NASA and China could not discover. Indian space research concluded the presence of water and moon using a moon mineralogy mapper. After reaching Earth's upper atmosphere for ionospheric research, followed by reaching the moon and discovering the presence of water, the next natural progression for India's space research scientists is a mission to Mars, popularly known as MOM Mars Orbiter Mission. You may all want to know why the red planet, the Mars. Billions of years ago, when Earth was just a ball of molten iron, while Mars was supposed to have abundant amount of water and a very thick atmosphere capable of sustaining life. Billion years later, our planet flourished for beloved life while Mars lost all its favorable conditions. The scientists are very keen to know what Mars past can teach us so that we can protect our future Earth but also explore the possibility of life in Mars itself because there was life possible once, billion years ago. When India began its mission to Mars, given that it had absolutely no previous expertise in interplanetary explorations in any form, India sought help of NASA and Soviets. The next day, this cartoon was published by New York Times, ridiculing India as a third world country and space exploration is best led to elite clubs like NASA and Soviets only. The world laughed at us. Given the fact that even the renowned space agencies had 60% failure rate and none succeeded in their very first attempt, the world found it very silly on India's space ambitions. And the challenge doesn't end there. The India needed to make this mission possible in 18 months time. That is, the India had to put the rocket into space in 18 months time because there is a specific type of geometry that gets formed between the Earth and the Mars which gives the shortest route to Mars. But if you miss it, you have to wait for nearly another two years, you know, 26 months to commence your mission to Mars program. India was just racing against time and it had another phenomenal technical challenge. Such interplanetary mission takes 40 minutes of signal exchange between the command center and satellite in space. In other words, if you give an instruction from a ground station, it takes 20 minutes to reach the satellite and it takes another 20 minutes to get an acknowledgement back to ground station. This time latency and the energy source required for such continuous communication just doesn't work in such time critical missions. This mandated our space scientists to develop a completely autonomous software that can self-diagnose, that can self-heal, that can execute instructions at the 100% precision because even a 0.00001% of deviation can guarantee failure. There were 51 attempts by other space elite agencies to reach Mars, but near 21% of them were successful. The next biggest challenge for MOM was to decide on the path to Mars that requires very minimal fuel. India decided in a last stage of rocket, it should inject the spacecraft not over India, but over Pacifics near Australia. But there was no ground station or antennas to track over sea. So, India decided to set up mobile stations over a ship that takes two months to reach the location. But the situation turned maniac. There was a huge storm that delayed the ship reaching its target location and the team is racing against the time. But with nature's blessing, the storm settled and the ship reached on 5th November 2013. The mighty PSLV had put its spacecraft in its first path in orbit. The biggest challenge is then in the final maneuver of rocket leaving the Earth's gravity and inserting into the Mars gravity called Mars orbit insertion. The direction of cruise is extremely important with 99.99% nothing less nothing more. This is where many mission fails in this phase. ISRO made a history on 30th November 2013 in its very first attempt to put the rocket at the right trajectory. To show how challenging it is to achieve the right trajectory path, 
it is like hitting a golf ball from chennai into a hole in manhattan and wait a minute the hole is moving after traveling 650 kilometers in 10 months of time mom was as close to mars just 500 kilometers away now is the time mom has to pass through the gravity of mars and it requires sufficient thrust and it's a most critical one time mission and there is no second chance if you miss it the mom would disappear forever in the deep space of emptiness the d day finally arrived the 24th september 2014 7 am ist astro received its first signal from onboard computer on its auto sequence initiation 21 minutes later the main engine started firing but 4 minutes later the station lost its signal there was a dead silence in the command center as if the time was stopped unfortunately mom went behind the mars where no signal can reach earth but at 8 am ist the history was made the mars received its mom the india's mom reached the martian's orbit the first country to have a successful mars mission in its very first attempt it is a most economical interplanetary mission the nasa's mars probe maven cost 650 million dollars the budget for the india's mars mission was a mere 74 million us dollars in comparison the budget for the movie the martian and the gravity was around 108 million dollars what hollywood spent for its computer graphics movie on space exploration india did it real with 30% less money it was executed in record 18 months time with full scale onboard autonomy which nasa took nearly 5 years to make its first failed mars mission and more importantly it was the angusty team at isro that created the history the scientific achievement in space exploration is only a very small aspect in the whole program but the biggest achievement of mom is this letter from a fifth grade boy to a chairman of isro saying how proud he as an indian watching the launch in tv and desires to be a space scientist one day in isro This mission of traveling to far another planet has created an awe and inspiration on science and technology and ignited 2 billion Indians and rest of the world believe that Indians are second to none. What a fantastic inspirational story isn't it? If this story is not enough, let me share a few more crazy facts about India that the rest of the world can learn from. Have you heard a great Indian culture philosophy Atithi Devo Bhava? the guest is god it was best illustrated by india's refugee policy while the most advanced developed nations like us build walls and have policies you know that disallow the people from its neighboring countries like mexico not allow the us india welcomes everyone who is deemed refugee you know irrespective of whether it's from pakistan or from bangladesh or from iran you name it you know we have people from all over it is the only nation that has a refugee policy that not only welcomes india but provides food shelter and livelihood for the refugees the third crazy indian fact Do you know that India was the only nation that never invaded any country in the last 10,000 years of history with a strength of over 1.4 million voluntary armed forces in defense it is the world's second largest military force and third largest defense budget in the world every country in that history attempted to invade other nations land or wealth but India not a single time they invaded any Mr Hu Shu the former ambassador of China once said India conquered and dominated the rest of the world culturally for 20 centuries without ever having to send a single soldier across her border the fourth crazy indian fact the unity and diversity this is best explained by a political story decades back in a country where 80% of the population practice hindu religion vote for a catholic lady sonia gandhi in general election after winning election she nominated mr manmohan singh a sikh by religion and was endorsed by a muslim president dr abdul kalam 
not just by religion even the mother tongue is so different sonia gandhi who is catholic who speaks italian manmohan singh speaks punjabi and while president dr abdul kalam speaks tamil the crazy fact is that india does not have a national language at all it has got two official languages hindi and english and has got 22 scheduled languages there are more than 19500 languages or dialects spoken in india as mother tongues and as you may know why java python c sharp come so easy for indians we are very proud of this great indian nation jai hind